Nike Minor Championships. This is Major. Gee, Galera, August Falcha, good day, Burra, Kunde, Volley. You're all very welcome to Burra County Offaly to St. Brendan's Park for this Electric Ireland, All Ireland, Minor B Camogie final between the Connacht side, Roscommon, and Kunde, Leisha. I'm Jason Keelan here with you to bring you through the action here today. Had a beautiful day in St. Brendan's Park here in Offaly as these two sides look to take the honours home back to their respective counties. And so to start off today, we'll bring you through our two teams as listed in the programme. If there are any changes, we will let you know in due course. Starting off with the side to our left here, who are Kunde and Alicia in the Gormagas Bond in the blue and white, and their manager, Niall Cuddy, a Camros man in his second season in charge of the team. And leash line out as follows. Ibrahim in the goals, Mia Henderson from the Harps Club. Full back line of Rideau, Amy Lacey, also from the Harps. Annabelle Ryan, from Cam Ross, August Avian Dalton from Nave Eamon. Half back line, Aoife Gee from the Harps, where's Ivor Kuig? Ivor Shea, centre half back, Caitlin Shore from Nave Eamon, August Ivor Shocked, Ava Gilfoyle from the Cam Ross Club. Lorna Parker, Quiva Cuddy from Nave Eamon, Ivor Hooked, August Ivor Nee, Lucy Conroy from the O'Moores Club. Half forward line, Catherine Kirby from the Harps is partnered by Aoife Daly and Ivor Hainjig from Cam Ross, August Ivor Doyeg, Emer Hassett from St. Bridget's. And the full forward line, Ever 3 Jake, Kayla Omar from St. Lazarians, Ever Akui Jake, or Ever Akara Jake, I should say, Captain Aferna, Tara Lowry from Cam Ross, August Ever Akui Jake, Kayla Oki from St. Lazarians. And the leash side managed, as said by Noel Cuddy, Stephen Delaney, Lenore Lyons, Noel Brennan, Zoe Daly, Chris Murphy, and Kira Carl make up the backroom staff. And to the right hand side then. In the Concrew V, August Garm, in the Primrose and Blue, we have Ross Common. And their Bonish Story, Colm Kelly, August Sean O'Brien. And they start out with Ivor Hain, Andrea Fallon in goals from the Oran Club. Ruth Gannon from Four Roads is Ivor Doe, cornerback, partnered by Sean McDermott from Oran at Ivor Three. And Anna Hussey from Oran at Ivor Akahar. Half back line, Grace Garrity from the Ross Common Gales. Lorna Pot, or Ilor Ivor Shape. Number six, Captain of Farnham, Mairead Lowen from the Four Roads. August Iver Shocked, Aideen O'Brien from Athlique. Iver Hooked, Caitlin Egan from St. Dominic's. August Iver Ani, Aaron Nicktiermida from Oran will make up the midfield partnership. Schieffer Hessian from Roscommon Gales, Iver Ajet. Hazel Kelly from Oran. August Iver Doe, Galana Sutton from Roscommon Gales make up the half forward line. And the full forward line then, Ava Mulry from Roscommon Gales. Hannah Murray from St. Dominic's, August Iver, Akujig, Saoirse Gakwin from the Four Roads. So there are your two teams as per match programme. Any changes, we will let you know in due course. Italy side coming into the game, having lost the 2022 uh, final to Offaly by a single point, but they were the champions in 2019. <coughs> Ten Camogie clubs make up the entire county of Leash and plenty of representatives across the board for them today from Clock Balacona, Bonnery and Gale, St. Lazarians, Camros and so on. Leash started out with a defeat in their opening game, ironically to Roscommon, the team that they face today, and one puck of a ball between them 2-8 to 1-8, the final score in favour of the Rossies that day. Since then, they followed it up with four wins in a row with Kildare, Westmead, my own Westmead, Carlo and Derry all accounted for. And a rematch against Carlo in the semi-final yielded a very handsome victory for them, hence why they are here today. For Roscommon, it's an unblemished season so far. Six wins from six, starting with Leash, Derry, Carlo, Kildare, and twice my own Westmeath fell victim to the Rossies. So they are looking for a fantastic finish to their season for their seventh victory in a row to take the All-Ireland title. They have a much better defensive record than Leash. They've conceded 337 this season. Leash conceded 8.39, but it's in the scoring front that Leash are very much the dominant side, having scored 20.67 in their first six games this season, compared to Roscommon, who have 12.62 on the board. So expect a fairly high-scoring game here, I would suggest, based on the attacking potential, particularly on the Leash side, Tara Lowry, their captain, 
uh, one of the stars of the team. And on the Ross Common side, a variety of scores across the forward line and through midfield. Uh, Aaron, Aaron McDermott, that was last week's player of the match uh, in their game against Westmead. So expect to expect to see plenty of her involved in this one today. The Ross Common men, of course, lost the uh, All Ireland Under 20B early final in Crow Park yesterday. So the ladies will be looking to go one better today. Uh, referee today, then Emma Cassidy from Derry. He's been in charge of a few All Ireland finals before, including the 2018 Cork Kilkenny game, which was dubbed by some of the media as the game of free ins. Uh, very high, not high scoring affair, mostly freeze. And so we will now have a run of Ian. So, as you might have heard on the camera there, fairly large crowd here in the stand beside us. A few over in the terrace on the far side, but the vast, vast majority here in the stand around us. A fairly even spread for Leash and Roscommon, as we are about to get underway here in this one. I said referee Amy Cassidy from Derry today, assisted on the line by Simon Redmond from the St. Anne's Club in the Dublin Mountains. Fourth official end of Loch Nan, and standby referee Carl Collins, both from the Ormore Marie Club across in Galway. Also today there is the double header down in Nolan Park, the A Shield final between Antrim and Limerick, and the A final itself between Cork and Waterford, which throws in at four thirty. So I expect a fairly entertaining game here. As Eamon Casty gets things underway here in this Electric Ireland All Ireland Minor B final. And the best of luck to both sides. And we hope for a cracker of a game. Any late changes, as I said, we'll let you know as the game is underway, and here we go. Can't spot any early changes as the tussle around the middle for possession, and it's one one in the middle by Leash, and it's a long ball forward. It's good to defend him back there by Ross Common, and it's Grace Garrity who manages to get in there. And Shauna does very well back there. Shauna McDermott expect to see a fair bit of her in the defensive position. Chance now for Ross Common to get forward here. Schiefer Hessian lays it off, off inside to Caitlin Egan. Egan now plays it long, but Leash Plenty of cover back there. It looks like it's player for player at the moment. No sign of any sweeper or anything around the half-back line. Although Roscommon now just dragging one of their players back. There is a change to the Roscommon side. Uh, number 17, Lily Murray, is on. For who we'll have to check. Referee says play away. And a bit of a scrap here around the middle now as both sides around the 45. Just looking for early possession. Just trying to settle the nerves. Hey, McCassie is the whistle to the mouth. Is he going to blow or play away? He says play away, and it's Murray who gets it out. A chance now around the middle for Caitlin Egan. Egan plays it all the way over to Ava Mullery. Played in the under-16 and minor lateral finals in the last two years, but it's great defending there back there by Leash. Amy Lacey does very well to get that one. A change on the Leash side as well. Susie Delaney, the joint vice captain from Port Leash, is in. And it's hers battling for possession over there, and she's battling with Quiva Cuddy alongside her. And so far, it's very much a scrap for possession here. No timer uh, in the stadium here. We'll keep an eye on the time here beside us. And linesman changed his mind there on that one, giving the line ball to Ross Common. So Lily Murray is in for Ross Common in the full forward line, it looks like. Potentially for Saoirse Gakwin. Haven't seen her number yet. And for leash it is Susie Delaney from Port Leash who is in the joint vice captain probably no surprise to see her in I said any other changes to let you know and that's great Hassan there and a chance now for Leash to go forward it's going to be Delaney who's going to take this sideline ball she has Kayla O'Keefe up there she has Tara Lowry up there as well 
Chance now for Delaney. No real movement so far. It's a fine cut, though. It's a brilliant ball in. It's a chance now for O'Keefe. But O'Keefe just trying to put a little bit of pressure on Ruth Ganyan back there. That she does very well. It's a chance here for an opening score. And that looks like referee says that's fine. Play away. And he's given the free out for a hefty challenge. High challenge. And Anna Hussey, the joint captain for 2022. But that was half a chance there for O'Keefe. But the Roscommon defence just doing enough. Potentially getting away with one there. It looked like there could have been a, a swipe of a hurl. Referee says play away. As we array our opening score in this one and Roscommon. Drive it long and it's driven long by Andre Fallon. But it's Lee Shaw in the middle. And good hassling back there, good hurry. And it's Lucy Conroy now. Conroy manages to lay it off. It's her midfield partner, Cuiva Cuddy, who has it. And Cuddy drives it long, but it's long to the left and to nobody. And wide. So, a couple of minutes gone here. Three and a bit minutes gone. Still waiting for our opening score. As both sides now have deployed some form of a sweeper. It looks like for Leash that it's Avian Dalton who is going to be the sweeper back there. Just common now. Try and win. It's a very crowded midfield, but Hannah Murray does very well. Murray now has to lay it back. She's put under all kinds of pressure, and it's outside to Murray. Murray plays it long, and she has a runner. It's a fantastic catch there by Schieffer Hessian. She looks up at the target. It's sliced all the way across. Will Mulroy, Mulroy keep it in? No, the ball's gone to the left and wide. See for Hesh, she for Hesh and putting that one to the left and wide there. She's been dubbed by some of her teammates as the loudest on the team. Well, we'll see what kind of instructions she might be barking out as this game goes on. Puck out taken long, but it's well taken in by Aideen O'Brien. O'Brien now knocks it long and she's got runners up there. One of them is Mulroy. Mulroy surely double tackled. Yeah, Game and Cassidy giving the free in there. Double tackle there, combination of Ava Gilfoyle and Aoife Gee there with the tackle. The chance now for opening score. It looks like it'll be Hazel Kelly. Wind a little bit of a factor here. Not too bad at the moment. Some black clouds are coming in, threatening to spoil the lovely day that it's been so far. Kelly now doesn't waste a lot of time over this one. Takes aim. It's got the distance. Has it got the direction? It's tailed off to the right and wide. So just over. Just going to five minutes gone here. And still waiting the opening score. We've had a couple of chances at either end. Some great defending by Ross Common early on. Three leash players go for the same ball. And it's a chance now for Anna Hussey. Anna Hussey loses possession. It's a hefty tackle there around the middle. Referee deeming that it is a foul there by Caitlin Egan. Looked like it could have gone either way. But either way the free is given. And Emer has it now. A chance to knock it forward. Looking for a bit of movement in the full four line. That ball's going to go over everybody's head. And a chance here for Leash. Lucy Conroy now has a chance. She burned down a goal. And that ball is wide. Two half goal chances already for Leash. None taken. And they'll be slightly disappointed to have no return so far. It's been they who've had the better chances to date. A chance now for us. Common to clear the lines out. And Andrea Fallon drives it long and she looks for Hessian. That's a fantastic catch by Hessian and she lays it off. And it's Murray now. Murray's kind of run into a little bit of traffic here. She's been tangled up. That uh, ball's managed to come back out. Again, another scrap for possession. We've had a few of these already. Amy Lacey runs in there for Leash. But it's a great play by Hessian now. That's lovely play. Good tackling though in the end by Amy Lacey. And she for Hessian doing very well. She manages to win the line ball, and the line ball will be taken by Grace Garrity of the Ross Gales Club. Reading a little bit about some of the players from both sides, she for Hessian mentioned that her one of her standout memories, the hair dryer treatment, as she referred to it in the 2020 semi final game against Kerry. She'll be hoping that her side won't need any of that today, that they'll be in control. Referee looks like here that he spotted a hurl in, yeah, a late hurl goes in. On Amy Lacey, and that's going to be a free out. <coughs> Chance now for Lacey to clear her line. She has Caitlin Shore. In the sort of sweeper role. There's a bit of movement left. She's gone to the right this side, and it's long. It's gone over everybody's head. It might come to Cuddy. And it's Conroy who takes it out there, and Conroy drills it along, and our common goalie has come out. And despite the best efforts there of Kaylee O'Keefe, Andrea Fallon does very very well and manages to win the free out she was quick off the line to try and stop 
the attack there from Leash and she did very well. She has got injured in the process. She was the goalkeeper on the under 16B 2022 side for Roscommon. And quite a few of the team are some of the under 16B All Ireland winners from 22 are on this team as well. And they're Roscommon themselves looking for their first B title in the county's history. Will be a momentous occasion for them. A lot of the leash side, of course, in the profiles and chatting to a few people who know some of them. The name Sarah Ann Fitzgerald, the leash legend, comes up as being an inspiration to a lot of these players. So it's great to see the level of camogie in the county now growing and growing. <coughs> so Fallon looks like she's fine to continue. And it'll be her who will take the free. And players moving all over. We've gone player for player here now This in this one. Fallon drives it long as far as she can. Battler in the middle. Taken down here by Hassett. <coughs> Hassett now drives it long. The rest common defence back there doing very well. And it's a chance. It's O'Keefe who's going in there for for Leash. Let's come back out to the middle again. Another battler in the middle. Caitlin Egan again. She's been at the heart of everything so far. Battler in the middle. Clash of sticks as a chance now. And it's the late introduction. Delaney who's in. And she's got a chance. It's the scramble around there. The ball is... Nobody's around it. Delaney goes to the ground. Refuse of play away. And Ruth Gannon does very well to clear her lines. Great hassle and hurry by Emer Hassett. Has it now. She manages to get it onto her left. She lobs it inside, but there's no leash player there. And that ball's going to trail off to the right and wide. Early chances for leash here. All gone to begging so far. Change of hurl over the far side. From that clasher in the middle. And it's Fallon now who will knock it long again. And that ball just spilling through the hands. And it's Hazel Kelly. Who's battling over there alongside Avi Foyle. I did say that we would have a high scoring game so far. It's been a war of attrition or in the middle. <coughs> Both sides are trying to get some kind of possession here. And it's drilled across by Hazel Kelly. And Hazel has Grace Garrity. Garrity, though, doesn't have a whole lot of options in front of her. She tries to get the flick. And it's very well done by Lenny Murray. Murray has a little bit of support as she opts for it. She's trying to go back inside. She cuts past one, cuts past two. And the referee deems that is a free in. And Schiffer Hessian looks like she's going to try and knock this one over. That was a very good play by Lily Murray from the St. Dominic's Club. She jinked her way past two or three and won the free for her side. And a chance now for the opening score. We've just gone past the 10 minute mark here. And Schiffer Hessian looking for the opening score of the game. And it's bang over the middle. Lovely score for Roscommon. Lovely score for Schiffer Hessian. And she made no mistake with that one. And it's Roscommon who are up and running off the mark. 1.2 no score. Coming up to the 11 minute mark here. And a chance now for Mia Henderson with the puck out. Ball's played long here. And it was Lucy Conroy who was trying to get in possession there if she could. She has Cuddy in there trying to help out as well. She has a few players in there trying to help out. It's Emer Hassett now. <coughs> Hassett does well but again it's just long and there's nobody there. And two leash players collide into each other there in that one. Roscommon happy just to play it on the ground. It's Hessian again. She's got pace. <coughs> Hessian's on the run. Lays it off. Looking for the 1-2. Looking for the return possibly there from Hannah Murray. Murray loses out but the ball still comes back out. And that looks like a good effort. It's going to trail to the wide. It's just wide there from Hazel Kelly. Roscommon now look like they've certainly got themselves into the game after those early chances for leash. And the one point lead. Is enough for them at the moment. <coughs> Mia Henderson now. From the Harps Club going to knock this one out. And she drills it long down the near side here. A bit of a height mismatch there as Hesham went up against Amy Lacey. And it's nobody's ball at the moment. A scramble for possession here. Aoife Daly goes in for Leash. And three or four Ross Common try and crowd around her as much as possible. It was Daly who's still in there as well. Kate and Egan now. She's on the ground and players falling all over each other here. Amy Cassidy happy to let play go. Decides now he's had enough. 
and he's going to move it out here for a throw ball. And Captain Mairead Lowen now comes out with the ball. She does very well there. She's been held in the back. Referee says play away. Mairead just protesting there that she was been held fairly obviously in front of the referee and the linesman. Both say play away though. Chance now for us coming with this line ball from Grace Garrity. It's a good cut from Grace. Movement down the far side here. Leash just trying to get some hand in if they can, but it's fantastic play here. Chance for Saoirse Gakwin lays it off into Hessian. Unfortunately, she's run into a blue wall. There's another scramble in there in the box, and it's Leash who managed to get out with it. Aoife Gita very well there to come out with that one. Clays around the middle by between Murray and Conroy. And it's Ross Common who managed to come out with it here. Erin McDermott, at first, we've really seen her in this one. Chance now, great run here. It's Hazel Kelly, looks like she's trying to run through. Can she find it? And that ball smacks. Well, Fanna Bellerine. <coughs> and a throw ball in by the referee. And a free in here to Ross Common. Yeah, chance for them now to double their lead. A handy enough free here as well. So a chance for second score of the game. And it's over the bar. Lovely. Ava Mulry with that one. And that makes it Ross Common. Two points. Leash, no score. Long ball up now, and Ross Common just trying to get some possession here again. They've taken their chances fairly well, and it's Hessian now who manages to lob it forward, but it's to nobody except Avian Dalton. Brilliant catch back there by Sean McDermott. The full back, and she lays it long as a battle up there. The ball ricochets off a helmet, but it comes out here to Hazel Kelly. Hazel plays it long, looking for Mulroy again. Ava Mullery again, and she's got a runner inside if she looks up, but it's good defending by Leash to hold it out. It's Kelly again. Drops the shoulder once, drops it twice, plays off the hand pass. A lovely ball outside to Hannah Murray. Murray with a chance for her first, and her side's third, and she's got it. Lovely score from Hannah Murray. Cross comment, three points, Leash, no score, and suddenly Leash find themselves three behind. That would look like a fairly promising start. A couple of goal chances missed. But they just aren't getting the puck outs away as much as possible. And just to say that, Caitlin Egan loses the ball and loses possession here too. Kaylee O'Keefe has come back all the way from corner forward into the middle. Plays it long. Kicks it long, I should say, up to Aoife Daly. Back again to O'Keefe. Half block down, that ball's going to trickle to the right and wide. Good defending there from <coughs> the common half back line to manage just to keep Leash at bay there. But it's going to be Andrea Fallon now with the puck out again. And they'll be very happy to be three points up as we tick past 15, just come to 16 minutes here. A handy puck out. Leash not really doing a whole lot there to stop Grace Garrity getting that one. That ball's just going to trickle out over the sideline and Hessian just can't reach it. Amy Lacey now with the sideline for Leash here on this near side. And certainly Leash will be disappointed not to have registered some kind of score yet, but credit to the Ross Common defence. They're not the best defence around for nothing. Only 3.37 conceded in all the games so far. And that's a miss hit from Lacey as it goes straight over the sideline. And it'll be a chance now for Hessian to try and find... Well, she's going to leave it, in fact, to Garrity. Garrity hit a good sideline here a couple of minutes ago. A lovely connection on it. And she'll be looking again for some runners on the inside. She has. Caitlin Egan has come forward as well. Garrity now. Looking to pop this one up the sideline and get Ross Cowan motored again. It's a good cut again. But Leash have managed to go back there. And it's going to be another sideline ball again for Ross Common. Only one in the full forward line. They're really inside the square. Could do a little bit more movement in the inside at the moment. But they'll take the three-point lead that they have. A little bit of movement off the ball here from Egan. 
And Garrity has come back out, and this time it's going to be Hesh, and he's going to have a pop herself. Potentially fancy her chances here. Uh, she caught the direction, but didn't get it off the ground properly. And it's Lacey now who's in there for Leash, doing a good bit of defending back there. It's great play. <coughs> Emer Hassett having to come all the way back to try and defend that one, but she finds a long ball up to Eva Daly here. <coughs> it's Daly against Captain Murray Lowen. And the worst common captain doing all she can. But that's definitely a tug of the arm there and spotted by Amy Cassidy. And that's going to be a chance now for Leash. It's a good way out this free, but that was definitely a tug of the arm there by Murray Lohan from the four roads. And it'll be a chance now for Emer Hassett, the joint vice captain, to try and knock this one over. Just coming up, ticking up to 18 minutes gone here. <coughs> That's coming three points leash, no score. A chance now for Hassett to get her side off the mark. Goes through a routine, steps up. She's caught that one very well. If it's on target, it's definitely over. And the umpires don't even wait till it crosses. They know it's gone over. A lovely score from Mimer Hassett. And her free gets things off the mark. So, Ross Common, three points leash. Point show one. And. It's going to be Andre Fallon to get us going here once again. She's had several puckouts. This is the first one she's had to take after a leash score. <coughs> and Fallon goes long. Two, three up for the catch there. And it comes all the way out to Delaney. who's tackled very high and the referee spots it. Everyone, I think, spotted that one. And Susie Delaney manages to win herself the free. The poor leash woman. Looks like she's going to... Leave it to Hassett. Well, she got one from a little bit closer and earlier on. Not sure what kind of distance she has for this one. She's connected very well. If it's on target, it looks very good. And that is another phenomenal score. Emer Hassett with two in a minute. <coughs> that one, absolutely the best of them. A free from the far touchline. Essentially on halfway, tight angle. And she managed to knock that one over brilliantly. And it's Amy Lacey now. We've seen plenty of her in this game so far. And she comes forward. And that's a brilliant ball inside. There's two inside there for Leash. And it's spilled at the crucial moment by Conroy. The Omar's woman just couldn't keep hold of it. And that is the best of the goal chances really for Leash so far. Definitely the third goal chance. And Leash will somehow be wondering how they are still behind this one with so many half chances ball drilled on the ground here and it's all the way forward to Captain Tara Lowry but she's met by her <coughs> opposite Captain Murray Lowen and a combination of her and Shona McDermott as well. So it's come all the way back out to Lowry but McDermott is there once again. She's been superb so far and that was great play there by Caitlin Egan to win the free credit to McDermott there. The Oran Club woman doing a great job there on Tara Lowry. <coughs> So it's coming out a chance to clear their lines from back in the own 45 yard line. 20 and a bit minutes gone, heading towards 21. The free lobbed in by by Aidan O'Brien. <coughs> O'Brien has two or three mover up there. A chance now, and it's knocked in. That one is going to stay in play, though. It's not going to go out. And it's a tussle in there between Avian Dalton and Hannah Murray. And that ball is. Pushing the back, Dean's Amy Cassidy. Rightly so, I think, and that's going to be a free into Ross Common. It'll be a chance now for Hessian to potentially knock over another one. We'll see what it'll be her that's taking it. So the Ross Common points so far. Hessian from a free. Ava Mullery and Hannah Murray. The other ones, but Mullery is going to take this one. Leashes two scores in the past minute or so for me. Marhasa, both from freeze. If the first was good, the second was even better. Chance now for Mully, the Ross Common Gales woman. And she makes no mistake. Beautiful free taken from Ava Mullery. And it's up to four for Ross Common. Four points to two now. Tight affair here. We could have had a good few more scores than we've had. But of course, tensions play a big part in North Ireland final as we are here. And it's Lily Murray who has that one just knocked off the top of the hurl. And a good battle around the middle again. <coughs> and Aoife does very well to manage to get that one back and she plays a long ball across the pitch it's going to be a foot race here between three but it's Ross Common who managed to come out with the shooter in the end and Anna Hussey does very well 
tries to play it long good dummy there from Anna Murray I think it was good hooking as well Kate Liga still manages to get it across what can Leash get out of this one it's Sean O'Mactor no it's Annabelle Ryan I should say who's in there but it's well taken out here and great block down by Hessian once again Hassett now trying to clear her lines and she manages to do just that great play by Ymir Hassett all the way up to Kaylee O'Keefe Kaylee's had to come all the way back she is apparently the fastest on the team and that's a huge ball down the pitch and now it's a one on one battle here chance now for Conroy Conroy has Ruth Gannon on her shoulder she lays it off and Shauna McDermott is back there once again and she has Mairead Lowen to help out well that's fantastic by the two centrally positioned defenders and now it's what's coming on the attack Kick forward by Murray. Murray has Mullery up front. Ah, oh, she's knocked that one too far ahead and it's going to go as far as Caitlin Shore. Shore under pressure. Neither side can really get hold of the ball for long enough. Saoirse Gakwin in there now, just trying to put a little bit of pressure on. <coughs> Scramble over the far side of the pitch. Him and Cassidy happy to let this one go and it's Leisha come out and it's Ava Gilfoyle and Gilfoyle drives it long but she can only drive it as far as Caitlin Egan. Egan now plays it out but it's over the head of Kelly. <coughs> it's going to be taken up though by Mullery and Mullery has she for Hesham making a run into the square she also has here Shagakwin but at least have their own defensive line back there and it's very well cleared out <coughs> super catch that's going to be a free out I would say that's going to be a frontal charge yeah that is a frontal charge by Hannah Murray it looks like referee has deemed that it was and the notebook is out here I think it's Hannah Murray. Is I haven't checked the number here. The referee has deemed that it is a frontal charge. And it's a yellow card. It's actually Caitlin Egan. Is the one who's in the book. And it's Susie Delaney is the one who's down. And it was a big hit to be fair. Referee deeming that it is worthy of a yellow card. So you tick towards 25 minutes gone here. This electric Ireland. All Ireland minor B final live from St Brendan's Park here in Burr, Cundiavoli. As I said, as Susie Delaney gets back up and gets the helmet back on. Yesterday's minor C final was won by Kerry. Tara Burke scored nine of their twelve points against Down in Clay and County Kildare to take victory. Today we have the double A final, the Shield, <coughs> Antrim Limerick down Nolan Park first, followed by the big one of the day. Cork against Waterford in the Electric Ireland Minor A final. Again, also Nolan Park in that double header. So Leash now with the free. The referee just looking for the shitter here. They all seem to have disappeared. Much like the Limerick Seniors ones did against Westmead down in Mullingar. 40 of them they claim to have lost that day behind the Dunstores end. I can assure you none of them are in my back garden as Leash now take the free and it's Caitlin Shore slight miss hit but she gets away with it <coughs> goes over the heads of two or three players here and Catherine Kirby the first we've really seen of her in this one and her first real action is to win a free so the Harps half forward did well there's the first as I said we've really seen of her in this one Kalo O'Mara a little bit quiet as well to be fair the Leash forward line being kept relatively quiet the two scores the only scores they have so far come from freeze and it's a chance now for Hassett to make it her third from freeze she's connected well <coughs> that's the third free in a row for Emer Hassett and to be fair it's the third time the umpires have gone for the white flag without the ball even going over the bar such is her deadly accuracy so far and now it's four points to three to us coming puck out slightly taken in the wind there and a little bit of a battle back there and it's Gannon who's back there and good tackling there by Leash tackled by Kaylee O'Keefe <coughs> no Keefe bit of a wild swing Hussey and Garrity both in there for Roscommon but O'Keefe has it back again drives it long but it's kind of too nobly at the moment and it will be Andrea Fallon who will drive it out Leash have it back again but it's spilled around the middle and it's McDermott McDermott now does and she dropped the ball around the middle and it's another one the scraps Lily Murray is in there and they've done well Caitlin Egan now has it and Caitlin manages to drive it out and it's Shore who takes it up for Leash <coughs> she's hassling Harry by 1-2-3 Roscommon Amy Lace is in there as well and it's Hessian now Hessian drives it long it's 2-2 two two back there it's been an interesting battle and it's Kelly who comes in now for Roscommon to make it 3-3 three three. <coughs> and Kelly's put the head down and she has support she has Muller in the inside surely will lay it off does lay it off chance there for Muller to find the back of the net and she does in off the post 
A lovely goal for Ava Mullery. Smashed in off the far post. She gave Mia Henderson absolutely no chance. It was all about Hazel Kelly in the build-up. She put the head down. She went flying. She played the hand pass through to Mullery. <coughs> and Ava Mullery with her first goal of the game. 1-4 to Roscommon. Three points now for Leash as we tick towards 28 minutes in this one. Puck out from Henderson goes all the way up to Tara Lowry, the captain. She hasn't really managed to get into the game here. She's been severely outnumbered back there by a combination of McDermott and Lowen at the best of times. Now have another four race on here and suddenly Roscommon are through again. There's four and forward here. Ah, it's a brilliant play by Shore back there, I think it is. Leash defender, now it's actually Cueva Cuddy who came all the way back there from midfield to track her runner. Great play again by Avian Dalton to knock that one long. Battle now between the two newly named players, Delaney and Murray. And it's Murray who comes out with it. And she's penalised four steps there. Ross Common crowd, very unhappy with that one. Leash though will certainly take that one. Well, it was a superb goal by Mullery, it has to be said. It was all about Kelly with the pace. She's not the fastest for a reason. Or never stopped running, according to a lot of her teammates. A chance now for Hassett with her lovely, unique style. And this one for 4-4. Four to four. And there's only one outcome here. <coughs> four frees for Emer Hassett. Four straight over the bar from the St. Bridget's woman. And so far, according to her favourite film, she is absolutely pitch perfect here with her accuracy. Leash player down here at the minute. It looks like it's Susie Delaney. And there is a call to the bench here. And Susie Delaney's may race may be run. Just waiting to see what Leash are going to do here. The uh, medics, I think, are calling for a change. Indeed, over the far side, it looks like we are going to have a change here. And sadly for Susie Delaney, it looks like our All-Ireland final is done. Named a 21, started though, and it's had a good impact on the game so far. The joint vice-captain of the team. And it is Kayla O'Mara who, apologies I said, wasn't in the game. The reason she wasn't in the game is obviously because Susie Delaney was on. Now Kayla O'Mara manages to get into the game, the St. Lazarians corner forward. So a chance now for Andre Fallon to clear the lines. 1-4 to 4 here. Puck of all between them, and it is Ava Mullery's goal that is the difference between the team <coughs> well batted down there by Hassett but Mairead Lowen now looks like she's going to try and find her way out finds Murray who's been all over the place at the moment doing very very well now it's a chance for Kelly to put the foot down again she has Murray on the inside if she wants that's superb defender back there absolutely brilliant from Cueva Cuddy and that's going to be her line ball she won't mind too much that was superb defender back there because there was a certain break on there for Kelly. They're really going to have to watch out for her. She's already done a damage by setting up the last one. Uh, Simon Redman now goes to fetch the sitter from the stand over there. Very, very big crowd here in St. Brennan's Park in Burr for this Electric Ireland All Ireland Minor B Camogie final. As Hassett now lobs it long here. Down the sideline. <coughs> and it'll be Kayla now who's into the action for the first time. And it's chipped forward by Catherine Kirby. But it's Lily Murray who's going to get back there again. And Lily does very well. Now it comes straight out to Kayla though. Kayla has a look up but her ball across is only going into one direction. That's into Shauna McDermott. McDermott though very well blocked down. 50-50 scramble in there. It's three or four leash against three or four Ross Common. And Eamon Cassidy happy to let this scramble go until now. He said enough is enough of that one. 31 and a half, 32 minutes gone here. And Murray Lone going to go in against Catherine Kirby here for this one. Referee just getting all the players moved back as far as he can. And the ball is taken out well by Kirby and she decides to kick it forward. And she manages to reclaim her own kick eventually. Ball's lobbed inside but Ross Common. Just doing what they have to do back there. They've done it well in this half, it has to be said. And a chance now for them to clear long. <coughs> Nation was looking for that one over the top. 
It's well taken by Amy Lacey. Lacey tries to drive it long. And Amy Cassidy calls a halt to proceedings here. So at half time, in a very entertaining game, even if it hasn't been the highest scoring game. Crowd appreciative of what they've seen so far. The ball's been in play for a huge amount of the game. It's Ross Common who are in the lead 1 4, 2, 4 points. That defensive solidity that they've shown through the opening six games of the championship and their six wins certainly come to the fore here. But it has to be said, Leash, with a little bit of better finishing, could have found themselves in a different position altogether. But it's Ross Common 1 4, Leash 4 points at half time. And we'll be back with the second half very shortly in this Electric Ireland All Ireland Minor B Camogie final.
Very welcome back here to the second half of this Electric Ireland All Ireland Minor B Camogie final. Roscommon Leash both back in the pitch. Both eager to go, as is referee Emma Cassidy who gets things up and running again. 1 4 to Roscommon, 4 points to Leash here. If you're late to the game, entertaining game so far, not as high scoring as we thought. But at the same time, both sides have given it their all. Any change for the second half, we will let you know. I'll try and let you know slightly better than I did for Kayla O'Mara's uh, lack of involvement in the first half. Apologies for that. But chance now for Lily Murray for us coming. Uh, Murray fires the shot, which goes to the right and wide. And the referee is, in fact, giving the free out. I think you get that one possibly for a slight chop down there. <coughs> so in the first half, it was Leash who relied entirely on the free-taken accuracy of Vimer Hassett and accuracy... Certainly the word for it, four frees, all given before they even crossed over the crossbar because the umpires just knew they were straight over. Amy Lacey now with the clearance for Leash. Goes over the hand of Caitlin Egan, all the way up to Kayla O'Mara. And another one of these Malise that we've had a few of in the first half as well, and it's all about possession here, get the crowd going as well. And Leash and I just struggling to try and get hold of possession here. Conroy was in there. But she has Caitlin Egan battling around her. She also has Aidan O'Brien. But it's Leash who come out with it. And it's Avigal Foyle who plays it long. Mairead Lone is back there doing the defending for Ross Common. And she's really put herself about in this one. A bit of a wild swing there on Aaron McDermott. But referees just play away. And Ruth Gannon in there now for us coming as well. The ball just squirming around. No one really holding on to it at the moment. And Garrity manages to get there. But Leash have won it back again. And the shot comes in. It's well held though by Andrea Fallon. That shot came in from Catherine Kirby. And Fallon drove it out long. And it was Hazel Kelly who was trying to get in there. But the referee deeming that. There's a foul there. Possibly by Kalo Mara. It was either Kalo Mara or Avangel Foyle. I think both involved in that one. And so a chance now for us, Common, just to try and settle things down here. Hessian just looking for some movement up there. She has Hannah Murray moving out. She's probably just going to try and drive it in long, which she does. And it's a good ball in. It's not an easy one to deal with. And Leash managed to bat that one out, which will go out for uh, 45. <coughs> so our first of the game. Hessian out. Looks like she's going to take this one here. So in the first half, we had 1-2 scored from play. Out of the total of 1-8. So very much free taken to the four. Uh, Hassett, Mulry and Hessian all of the mark with the place ball. As Hessian now with the chance to knock over 45 here. The first of the game. She connects well. Is she happy with that one? She is. A lovely score. And she for Hessian knocks over a 45 to put her side further in command here. Double scores now, 1 5 to 4 points. Three and a bit minutes gone already in the second half. Game absolutely flying by here. 10 10 stuff still. That puck out from Henderson now was taken in by Kelly. And Kelly back to Avon Mullery. Mullery now into her full forward partner, Hannah Murray, but that's a little bit of a wild swing. The referee saw it and waved away any of the protests. It's knocked down by Hassett. Leash so far just struggling struggling to get past halfway. That's a very hefty tackle. Referee just saying, calm it down a little bit. And there's Catherine Kirby with the foul there. <coughs> that will be a chance for Hessian now, just, just inside the leash half of the pitch. She has Aaron right there with her making a run off the shoulder. But she looks like she fancies her chances here, lining this one up in front of the target. It's a good bit out. She connects well. It's definitely got the distance and much like her opposite free taker in the other half. The umpires wave that one over before it's even got near the goals, such as the accuracy. Lovely play there from Schieffer Hessian. And uh, now 1-6 to Ross Common, 4 points to Leash as Catherine Kirby from the Harps is down, receiving a little bit of treatment over the far side. They've already lost Susie Delaney to injury the joint vice captain. She was taken off near the end of the first half and replaced by Kayla O'Mara from the St. Lazarian's Club. 
and it will be Mia Henderson with the puck out once to get things going again. Catra Kirby still down, receiving a little bit of treatment over in the Shield A Shield final. Uh, life in Nolan Park. Uh, Antrim are in the lead here against Limerick, coming up near to full time, two fifteen to one thirteen. They lead in stoppage time. So, with the C Championship best day going down to the southwest, down to the Kingdom of Kerry. Looks like the A Shield will be going up to the northeast, the opposite end of the country, up to the Glens of Antrim. So, could gorgeous Antrim if they do hold out, which I expect them to do, bar some sort of astronomical collapse in the last minute. Puck out there. Brilliantly taken in by Hazel Kelly. And she surely will go on the run. That's what she loves to do. She has the pace to do it. She cuts back inside, and that's a lovely score. Probably the score of the game from play. Hazel Kelly gets herself off the mark. She was the assist for that beautiful goal by Ava Mulder in the first half. And now Ross Common just turned on the gas a little bit here. Going up to six minutes gone in the second half. One seven to four points. Henderson's puck out. Very well taken around the middle as Leash just try and work their way back into this. Really, they probably need a goal or at least a few quick scores, but it's well taken there by Ruth Gannon. Gannon possibly fell over that side. Referees his play away as Leash win it back. But their pass only goes as far as Kelly. Kelly turns it long inside. That ball just just slipping under Mullery's grasp and it's taken in well by Avian Dalton. 50-50 challenge error in the middle and it's Gilfoyle who manages to take it out. <coughs> Gilfoyle's layoff though is lost. And likewise, Caitlin Egan loses it. And it's a bit of a hot potato here at the moment. Murray now plays it off and a chance now for us common just to try and burst through. Referees just play away here and Sir Shagakwin going through. Turn him once, turn him twice, surely steps. Yeah, it will be a free out. Couldn't argue with that one at all. As much as the steps look very fancy, Sir Shagakwin was in possession of the ball incorrectly the whole way through it. And it had to be done. The leash crowd here now just trying to muster some support for their team here. They find themselves six points behind. And in all Ireland final, especially in a low score one like this so far, that's quite a large mountain to climb as that was a hefty collision. I think there's going to be a card here, possibly. I'm not sure if it was Catherine Kirby was the one who committed the foul. Just trying to check here and see. Referee just explaining what it's for. I think even the blind man on the street knows what that one was for. And it is indeed a yellow card. And Catherine Kirby, it looks like, who is yellow card. It is indeed, yeah. Catherine Kirby finds herself in the book. Joining Ross Commons, Kate and Egan from the first half, both for similar fouls. The chance now for Hessian to look for a range once again. Umpires, for the first time, are going to wave this one wide. So, yellow card apiece now for both sides. But it's all about the scoreboard, and Russ Commons certainly are well in front in this one. Leash two goals is really what they're looking for. But that puck out by Henderson though is well taken. Uh, well, say well taken in by Kelly. It's not quite well taken in. Um, that looked like there was a bit of an off the ball tangle going on there. And Kelly was having her helmet pulled by the looks of it. The referee though has deemed that it's going to be a throw ball here. Not exactly sure what happened there. But it's Kelly who's in for the throw in against Conroy. And a battle for possession again in the middle. Ross Common have won the vast majority of these, and even the ones that they've lost, Leash have been guilty of giving the ball away fairly soon afterwards. It is Leash who win it. And it's well done by Annabelle Ryan, the Camros woman. Manages to get it out to Shore now, and Shore drives it long, but again, it's just empty, wide open space. The Ross Common are filling very well here, and it's played long by Caitlin Egan. Shore goes up for that one. She's put in a good shift, but just not getting any change out of that one. And it's Kelly now. The two number 11s come face to face here. Aoife Daly, her challenge. It was the Ross Common woman who never stops running, who's managed to get herself to free. So Hazel Kelly winning the free. She's certainly been one of the star performers here today. She's got herself a point, but she's been involved at the heart of absolutely everything. A chance now just coming up to nine and a half minutes or so gone. That'll be a chance now for Ross Common to add to it. Mullery has a pop. That one looks like she's sliced off the left. Yeah, just caught that one a little bit. A little bit too heavy. 
Didn't get any of the curl that you're looking for, and it's another wide for Ross Common. <coughs> as Kayla O'Mara ditches the glove down here in front of us. Leash now just looking for some kind of spar to get themselves back into it. That's the first puck out that they've won in a good while. Nothing wrong with Mia Henderson's puck has just not been taken in. And again, it's just bad hand from Leash. Catherine Kirby losing that one, and Catherine is down, clutching her knee over the far side. Looks in a little bit of distress here. May have got a smack of a loose hurl by the looks of it. I'm just looking at the replay here. So. So Catherine down receiving a little bit of attention here. Just holding on to the knee. So 174 points here. Antrim are the a Shield winners down in Nolan Park. As we await the Cork versus Waterford A game thrown in at 4.30 down in Nolan Park as well. The two heavyweights contesting the A final here. It's the two heavyweights contesting the B final. And at the moment, it's the Rossies who are out in front. We're just watching the replay here of that incident involving Kirby. Nothing, didn't look like anything malicious happened in it. It looks like possibly she fell a little bit awkwardly. She is back sitting up again though, so hopefully she will be alright to continue. Leash have plenty of substitutes available on the panel, a full panel of 30 here today. And Kirby is coming off. And it looks like she is going to be replaced. With possibly Amy Amy Dowling possibly is the replacement. Or Aoife Delaney, I think, actually. It's Aoife Delaney, number 20, I think, who has come on in place of... Or the 28, just heard a little bit hard to see from here. Leah Rice, possibly. <coughs> Roscommon now trying to win possession back over there, but it's Leash who managed to get it, and that ball's gone out over the sideline. Eve Fidelio was the one who was tackled. So an enforced change for Leash. Catherine Kirby taking the hit back there, and she is the one who is replaced. Ball now played long across the pitch, and Leash just looking for something here, and it's Kayla O'Mara. But just look at the amount of Roscommon players that are back there. They're Attacking in numbers, but equally defending in numbers. That's a fantastic catch. That's super player now. Will Hessian go for the point herself? She's jinked back inside. Now she's got to take an offer, and it's Shore now who will try and work it out. Shore has support, and it's well taken in by Conroy. Is this the break that Leash are looking for? They just need to get something up front. They haven't really got an attack in this half at all. Conroy's still battling for it here, but Ross Common just swarming around her. And it's well done by Mairead Lohan, captain of Fern. You can see why she is the leader. A good tackle in there by Leah Rice. Substitute has just come on. And another one of the Malise around the middle of scrap for possession. And it's McDermott who takes it out. She's been superb for Ross Common. That ball's played long. Now there's a chance here, and it's Gakwin. Sirsha Gakwin hasn't gone to the scoreboard yet. She's looking to make a change to that one here. Now that ball's lobbed in, and that ball's just gone over the head of Henderson and dropped to the right and wide. Well, credit to Henderson if she knew her angles that well. She just let that one go over her head. And to the right and wide. That was Gakwin's first real attempt on goal. As Henderson now plays it out long again. And it's taken over there. Ross Common just seemed to have players in every spot that the ball is landed to. And it's Egan who plays it inside to Gakwin. She's going to have another chance maybe. Lays it all the way back and it's a lovely play. Hessian lobs it in. But it'll be Leash who will clear it out, but it's cleared out only as far as Kelly. Bit of a panic clearance, and Kelly will punish that one. Uh, she's been on fire today. Pace assisting, and now adding a second point to her tally. And Roscommon are just edging further and further away here from Leash, who haven't scored from play in this game and haven't scored in the second half. And that will disappoint Niall Cuddy 
and his troops on the sideline probably the most and that ball going over the sideline and it'll be a Roscommon line ball is very good defender back there by Aideen O'Brien so 1-8 to 4 points here 7 point lead for Roscommon Leash just mark a space here at the moment from the sideline puck out they only have two up front Roscommon have four or five back but equally have plenty up front as well that's a decent cut by O'Brien and the ball comes all the way back out and it's another scramble in there there's five or six bodies on the ball no, Brian goes in there. It's one. McDermott is in there. Cuddy is in there. Shore is in there. It's Gilfoyle who goes in there. It's a absolute scramble for possession at the sideline, and it's Leach who come out with it. So a little bit of a moral victory there for Leach. Just gets the crowd going again. They haven't given up hope yet. They lost the 2022 final by a point to near neighbours off Fleet. They don't want to lose this one as well. The sideline ball that's taken him well by Lily Murray. She was the name to start originally, but by God, she's put in a great shift since she, since she started. Hessian now plays it long. There's a chance there for us, come possibly to take the chance themselves, but it comes out to Kelly. She's going to go off the right. That's brilliant defending back there. It was Hassett going back doing the defending. A ball played out, batted out very, very well. It's Eva Daly who's there to help out. And Daly out to Conroy. Conroy has a pipped off for though. And it's Muller who's in there, but you see Conroy does very well once again plays it long but it's only up as far as Aidan O'Brien O'Brien just trying to keep it in play here, the ball's still in 50-50 battle, ball's still in play steams the linesman and Mairead Lowen does very well but her clearance goes to nobody, ball's going to play for a long time but no real possession chance now for Caitlin Shore Shore on the dummy, Freese his play away drives it long and a battle in the air, but it's ooh, it's not taken in by anybody. Now it's taken in, and it's Lohan once again. Lohan plays it long. Good tackling back there by Amy Lacey for Leash. But Caitlin Egan drives it long. It's taken out by Leash once again here, and a chance for them. Has it now. She's only got one option. That's to drive it long. But it's very obvious that Leash just haven't got anyone in the forward line. That potentially won the first touches that Andre Fallon has gotten this second half. She cleared her lines well. But Leash now just trying to build something here. And it's Aoife Daly who lobs it in. And Lily Murray back there once again. She's been outstanding in that defensive role. And Shauna McDermott full back now has pushed forward a little bit. Ball drilled inside. And it's lovely play and a chance now for Mullery. Mullery has got one on the outside if she wants some support. She has Hessian coming in there as well into the scramble. Leash is trying to get it out here. Annabelle Ryan is in there trying to do the hard work and she does very well. She gets hooked up by Hessian. The ball's still in play. Carl Collins over the far side saying that it's still going. And Leash are just trying to work it out and it's Aoife Gee here. And for one of the first times really in this half, Leash put on a bit of the afterburns, but some great tracking back there by Aaron McDermott. Drilled across the middle. Two Leash players go for this one now. Can they spark something here? Kayleigh O'Keefe, she has a runner. O'Keefe drops the shoulder. She's got past Anna Hussey. She drives the ball in long. That ball's going to be the goalkeeper. So I would say it is. It's brilliantly caught by Andre Fallon. She's been superb. That's that she's had to do. She's done it well. That's the first real action she's had in this half. Ball played out. Caitlin Egan now drives it long. Chase on here between Conroy and Hessian. It's Hessian who wins a little bit of a nudge in the back. Referee says play away. Conroy falls over, loses the footing. Amy Lacey now trying to get it out. She has company there from well, both sides now another Malie player down in the middle of it Cassidy, Eamon Cassidy in the middle says play away battle here now and it's a free one by Aaron McDermott her quote on her profile says pull hard she's no relation well she certainly went in ferociously there in full pat short unbelievable style and she came out with the free and a chance now for Hessian to knock over her fourth score of the day two frees in the 45 to her name already our side seven points ahead, ticking up to the 20th minute. It's high, it's long, if it's accurate, it looks like it is, yep. Umpire, no doubt about that one. She for Hessian, her four to the day. And Leash just not finding a way back into this one at all, and Ross Common just tagging on the scores here. 19 and a half minutes gone. Ah, superb catch, that's fantastic. 
Kaylee O'Keefe and she dummies past one she dummies past another she has runners left and right but once again it's Roscommon who are there and it's once again it's Mairead Lohan who's there Lohan drives it long and Roscommon just as quickly turning this defensive pressure into an attack up the far and then it's Hessian she has runners will she get her first in play is she going to go for it herself she is and it's perfect straight over the bar she for Hessian First from play for her, her fifth point of the day. Three frees, a 45, a point. There'll be no need for the hairdryer treatment after this game by the looks of it, as she had in 2020 in that semi-final against Kerry. And Mia Henderson now driving it along again. Can Leash find anything to get them back into this game? They're nine points behind. They need goals and they need them quick. Ten minutes to go here. Free one by Ethan Daly from Cam Ross. It looks like it'll be Hassett now who'll just drive it in long and see what she can find from it. Yeah, and what she finds is Captain Tara Lowry. Lowry, though, Hassel it again. Lowry does very well. Now, a chance. Here we go for Leash. This is what they're looking for. They need something. They need goals. The ball's driven in. It's absolutely fantastic. Saved by Andrea Fallon. It was a brilliant shot by Cuiva Cuddy. How good was Andrea Fallon there to stop that one? Eamon Cassidy just looking to try and let it run if he can, but no, he has to throw the ball in, I think, by the looks of it. Oh, what a save by Andrea Fallon. She's been perfect all day in what she's done. She hasn't been called on much in the second half. She's busier in the first. But that save, absolutely superb. And Roscommon managed, as they have done several times in this game, just to win the throw ball, and they have won the free out. And it looks like going from bad to worse for Cuiva Cuddy. She saw her shot saved a minute ago by Andre Fallon. And now it looks like she's going to be in the book. The third third yellow card of the day here. Just watching a replay here of Andre Fallon's save. It was a drilled low shot. It bubbled a couple of times. And Fallon got down very, very well to save that one. Superb save from the Oran goalkeeper. 2022 under 16 goalkeeper of course a substitution here for Ross come on and it looks like it's Iver a Kui jig is it Saoirse Gakwin I think it's Saoirse Gakwin who is coming off <coughs> and we'll check and see who's on their place now in a moment as Leash also warm up a couple of substitutions substitutes themselves and they are going to make one in fact it is going to be Captain Aferna Tara Lowry who is going to be replaced so a substitution on either side. We we'll check our check our numbers here now in a minute. Anyway, as Fallon will get this back underway again, drills it long, and this time Leash managed to get some numbers back. And it's good defending back there, and they managed to get themselves out. And it's Lacey who plays it long, but she can't find anyone in the blue and white that she was looking for. Lucy Connor now takes it in, dodges the tackle that was coming in very well, manages to lay it off, lays it off. And that ball, though, from me, Fidelio was laid off. And it was Caitlin Egan who was there to stop it. Now, there's four leash defenders and one Roscommon attacker. And it's Amy Mullery who's the attacker. Annabelle Ryan, though, does very well. And Caitlin Shore clears the danger out for now. Ah, superb catch. Brilliant from O'Keefe. Keep knocks in long, but again, you can see. Oh, that ball's gone all the way through. It's gone past. It's gone past Lily Murray, but there was good covering back there. Well done from Ruth Gannon. She was the cover that they needed and she got back very well. Well, it was half a chance there for Eva Carla St. Bridget's substitute. But nothing coming for Leash from that one as they... So, on a D to Leash a Cuiva Cuddy. Ever hooked, who's just been yellow carded. It's been replaced around the middle of the pitch here for Leash. And again, we'll check our... And we're now in a second once we get a, a look at it. But it is Cuiva Cuddy. Her race has run the Neve Mon player, August Iver and EJ Aoife Cuddy is on in her place. Sister for sister here. August uh, Onadi Yella to for Alicia. Amy Lacey from the Harps has also been replaced at cornerback. To be fair, it looks like she's going to end up with the losing team, but she has been superb from start up to her finish here. And Ball now is Roscommon try and get forward again here. They got plenty of numbers up there. One of them is Hessian. She against whenever a referee says too many steps, too much dancing around there. 
It looks like it's Cesar Healy who's come on, I think. For Leash. That ball there just spinning around. A chance now and out. Another chance for Leash to get themselves in and goal. Definitely a deliberate foul. Referee says play away and it's in the back of the net. Aoife Daly has herself a goal. Now, have we got a game on here? Well, Andre Fallon won't be happy with that one not keeping it out. Particularly after the superb save she made a couple of minutes ago. 25 minutes gone. There's five minutes plus stoppage time left. And Leash have got themselves a green flag. 1-10 to 1-4. Two more of those green flags will do them the world of good. <coughs> Ball out in the middle of the pitch. Caitlin Egan been challenged in there. Uh, and Aoife Cuddy is just on the pitch involved in that one. So too is Lucy Conroy, referee, just calming things down. Says, leave it be. Maybe this one isn't over just yet. We won't say anything until the final whistle is gone. 25 and a bit gone. Has Hessian now well inside her own half. Looking to try and lob this one in, although she's given that one plenty of welly. And that one looks, it's absolutely superb. Absolutely fantastic from Schieffer Hessian. That is her sixth of the day. Four frees, 145, one from play. Not by far the longest distance score of the game from well inside her own half. Of course, Common Medic's just on, just giving a little bit of treatment here to one of the backs. Cass Henderson now lobs the ball out. And this one's gone past everyone, but it has to gone past Sean McDermott. She's been fantastic back there today. Ball flick forward and accidental dummy perhaps there from Tara O'Brien. Ball comes out to Hessian. Chance here now. What can she do? Is she going to get another? She is. Well, they say the cream always rises to the top. And she for Hessian has been fantastic. Seven points. Two from play of 45 and four frees. That puck out now only goes as far as Hazel Kelly, but there's nothing Hazel can do about that one. The Orn half forward. She has had a superb game as well, it has to be said. Of course, after the game we will have the chats with the player of the match and the bonish door of the winning side and hopefully someone from the defeated side as well. Ross Commander is trying to put out from the back and Lohan and McDermott combining. Well, they've combined in the tackle on the defensive end all day. As a duo, they've been absolutely superb. As has Annabelle Ryan for Leash at full back and her clearance is long and Hessian now. Highs the target again and before she's even before she's even turned around, the ball is over the bar and it is superb. This is one of the great All-Ireland final performances from Shea for Hessian. Eight points to her name. And that's a, a catch there. Looked like by Kayla O'Keefe. She went down a bit heavy there. She's playing away though. Referee says play away. Ball back now. Avian Dalton. The, one of the four Nave Eamon stars in this side. Along with Lenora who's a selector on the bench. And that'll be a line ball to Leash. 13 to 1-4 here. It looks like it's going to be Roscommon's day here. As we tick towards the 29th minute. And the ball comes out only as far as Kelly. Kelly looked like she's going to go for a target through the little dummy. Decided to lay it off to her full forward partner who is Hannah Murray. But Hannah can't add to her point. She already has. And that one is to the left and wide. And puck out now out to Conroy. Conroy's under all kinds of pressure from Kelly. And if he... Don't get hold of the ball. Kelly certainly will try and punish, especially with that pace. And Kelly has it. And uh, Kelly swipes off the right, but it goes just to the wide side, the left side of the near post. As our fourth official here in the lockdown from Moore Murray just coming out here with the board to signal an out. They're going to make a substitution, I think, in fact. As Ross Commodore are going to make another throw the dice here, but I think time is going to be against them. It looks like it's going to be Ross Commons Day as this substitution takes place here and it will just trying to see who it is who's coming on here. And it's Lily Murray who is coming off for Ross Common. She has been immense from start to finish, an absolutely superb player. 
They are at all the credit in the world for performance today. As Hessian now wise the target, you'd nearly expect her to get this one. And of course, as I say, the first of hers goes wide as Enderlock Nan signals three minutes of additional time here at the end of the Electric Ireland All Ireland Minor B final. It looks like it's going to be victory for us, Common, and victory for Colum Kelly and Sean O'Brien's side. The joint management have put together a fantastic squad here. This squad looking for their first B title. And it looks for all the world as if the wait is going to be over as we have two and a bit minutes of stoppage time left to play. Who knows, maybe they'll be heading back to Go Quest for another day out in Dublin. Last one apparently, according to... I don't know, I was chatting, they seem to go very well. I'm sure they'll take another one. Chance now for Alicia to knock this one in. Can they get something just to put a little bit of a change in scoreboard? Emer has it. She had four frees in that first half. And the ball comes back out. And Alicia just throwing a couple of dummies here. Chance now to bury for a goal. And that one has gone over the bar. Consolation score for Leash. But they will take that one. Just trying to see who it is who got that one there. But it's a score for Leash. 1-5 to 1-13. I think it's Kalo Mar. No, it's substitute for Cuddy who got that one. So Cuddy gets herself a point after her introduction a couple of minutes ago. One thirteen to one five for now. About ninety seconds or so to go. Here at St. Endes Park and Burr. As the ball is played in long. Tara O'Brien out of substitute. She has Hessian on the run inside. Tries to play it much longer and manages to find Mullery. Mullery turns off one, turns off two. And that one is gone over the bar. It's a lovely score from Maeve Mullery. So that's 1-3 for her today. A goal from play. That peach of a score off the post. Two points and a free. 1-14 to 1-5 here. At least just not getting anything, any change in the second half. But single score for me for Daly. The goal is all they have to show for their second half endeavours. But such is the way. Partly because this first common defence has just been superb and the link with attack has been brilliant. And here's part of the reason for it. Mairead Lohan and Mairead lays it off. Caitlin Egan now. Looks like it's Avian Dalton who's going to win that foot race against Mullery. But the layoff doesn't work out, but it's still going to be Alicia Ball. It was Kelly who was putting in the chase here. Well, I think it's fair to say the player of the match will be in a yellow and blue jersey. And I think she, she for Hessian has to have put her hand up here f for a pair of the match in this one. So it's come and make another substitution. Anna Hussey from the Oran side, the joint captain from last season, replaced here in the dying seconds by Charlotte Blackweir from the Pori Pierce's club. As that ball's drilled across the goals and drilled to the right and wide as Eamon Cassidy takes a quick look at the watch. 20, 33 minutes, time is just about up. This puck out could be the end of things here. It's Mia Henderson who's going to drive it long. I'd say for the final time in this one. Sam Cassidy lets the ball come out and it comes out to Kelly. Kelly slices that one across the pitch. And it'll be Lee who will manage to get it. And that is that. Roscommon. Roscommon are your champions for 2023. They are the All-Ireland Minor B champions. And the delight evident for all to see it is the first B title that the county has won in their history. And they beat Leash for a second time this season, this time by a much wider score from the 2-8 to 1-8 in the opening round of the championship back a couple of months ago. But they are the champions for 2023, 1-14 to one fight the final score. Schieffer Hessian with an incredible eight points to her name, 1-3 from Ava Mullery. Two from Hazel Kelly, one from Hannah Murray. And you can't argue with the final scoreline. Andre Fallon, superb in goals for Ross Common as well. And for Leash, four points from Emer Hassett and the goal from Aoife Daly. What they have to show for it as we will have the medal presentation, the cup presentation now in a minute. So, Schieffer Hessian is... My player of the match for today, the Iver Jeff for Roscommon. And in a few moments we will have the captain, 
who will be up to make her speech and of course Mairead Lohan will be up to give a winning captain speech and hopefully we'll hear from Colin Kelly or Sean O'Brien or one of the backroom staff soon enough as well but it's Ross Commons Day it's a day for the Rossies commiserations to Leash they fought a very good battle all the way to the end their only defeats this season coming in the first and last games both against Ross Common well, they can be very proud of their season huge wins particularly that one against Derry in the fifth game I think it was they scored 8 6 or 8 7 in that game huge tally in any Camogie match and the semi-final demolition of Carlo as well will certainly stand to them next season and they will learn lessons from this one as well for sure but it is they who will advance on to greater things next season as the B champions and we await for Captain Mairead Lowen to accept the trophy on behalf of her team and Colin Kelly and Sean O'Brien we will hopefully speak to one of them we will also hopefully speak to some of the Leash uh, team as well just to get their reactions always tricky to talk after a defeat but we hope to hear a little bit from them so we'll await for the presentation now in a couple of moments time as the crowd filter onto the pitch to join in the celebrations here
cordial, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to keep this fairly short. I'd like to, first of all, on behalf of the Camogie Association, welcome you all here and thank you all for your support here today for the two teams in what was a fantastic minor B final. I'd like to thank the grounds people who had the pitch in such great condition for us today. Without a pitch in this condition, we can't get a game of the quality that we had today. We really appreciate the effort that was put in by everybody to make sure that we had the facilities available to us today for today's final. So thanks to everybody involved in St. Brendan's here in Burr for the quality of the facilities that they made available to us. <laughs> I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Eamon, the referee, and his full team of officials. It's always a good sign when there's very little talk about the referee after a game. It's an indication that he quietly went about his job and did a good job at it. And I think he did a very good job, and we really appreciate the effort that he and his team put in today. So thanks very much, Eamon. I want to pay particular thanks to our sponsor, Electric Ireland. Electric Ireland have done a fantastic job for us as our primary sponsor of the minor competition and have put a huge effort in to raising the profile of the minor competition. It's a hugely important competition for girls. Playing camogie at that age, it's an age we all know, anybody who's involved knows the extent to which we lose girls in their teens from our sport. And it's really important that we have a strong competition and with a strong competition you need a strong sponsor and strong coverage and Electric Ireland have been absolutely fantastic and I'd like to commend them for their sponsorship, their ongoing sponsorship and thank them very much for their support. <laughs> to the game itself, a fantastic game girls, a great final. Leash, you'll be disappointed, I know that, finals are for winning they say and it's always disappointing when you come to a final and you don't come out the right side of it. Uh, certainly in the first half there was nothing between the two teams there was a couple of super balls into your inside forwards if they had just stuck it could have been a different game but they didn't and that's the way things go the scoreline probably didn't give you full justice to the amount of effort the work and the work rate out there the whole way to the final whistle so keep the heads up be proud of your performance be proud of the fact that you got to an All-Ireland final that's no mean feat in itself and drive on from where you're going now and bring it on up into the adult ranks so well done Leash. <laughs> Roscommon are getting giddy behind me Roscommon well done superb superb performance Uh, a very dominant, a very dominant period, particularly in the second half, where you just you just took control of the game and and you grounded up. What was really, really important to see as well, and a, and a good indication of mindset was even with the game pretty much won in the last 20, 30 seconds, you were still fighting really hard for every single ball. You wanted to get another score and another score, and that's a brilliant indication of the mindset of all of your players, and it's a gr brilliant indication of the coaching that you've been getting. So really, really good, very well done. I'm going to move on. I have two, two awards to present. Obviously, the, the big one is the Cup. But first of all, the player of the, of the match. And there were a number of players who were considered for this on both teams. <laughs> but there's uh, only one winner of this, and that is the Roscommon number 10, Schieffer Hessian. <laughs> And the remaining thing to do, and I have to say on a personal note, you'll see that I'm wearing a Connacht camogie top because I'm chairperson of Connacht as well as being here to represent Ord Corla. And my mother was born in Roscommon, so it gives me great pleasure to call on the Roscommon captain, Raid Lohan, to receive the cup.
is this one? <laughs> um, I'd just like to say a massive thank you, firstly, to um, management. I see them looking up at me here. <laughs> Bernie, Kevin, Sean, Teresa, Colm. Without you, we would not be here today. And Andy, of course, the stats man. <laughs> and to all the supporters out here in front of me, like, the game wouldn't be the same without you here cheering us on. And we're so honoured to have such a great bunch of supporters from Roscommon. And also to our sponsors, Tracy Decor and McNulty's for the lovely gear we got. Um, and I'd just like to thank... And Casey's as well for the gear bags. <laughs> And to the ref and the linesmen and everyone who made this day possible, sincere thank you from all of us. And especially I'd just like to thank my family, my dad, my mum, my brother, and my two sisters, because without them I wouldn't be here today. And um, <laughs> and Leash, you were so tough. You have no idea the fear we had in that dressing room coming out to to play you. You're a great team and we, we just got the luck today to beat you. We were, we're fairly on par now and we just got the luck in the end. And lastly, I just want to say um, I lost two of my friends this year. Matthew and Archie O'Brien. Matthew O'Brien and Archie Nocton. And I'd just like to dedicate this cup for them because they were both brilliant sports persons and I think of them every time I come out onto this pitch. So, thank I'm here with uh, my player of the match, uh, Shifra Hessian. Uh, Shifra, immediately after the final whistle, probably tricky, but sum up how you feel after that first title for us coming at the B level. Uh, there's no words. Like th Some of the girls here are in tears. Like It's just absolutely happiness. Like There's nothing like winning All-Ireland. Like It's some feeling. Like you, you don't get them too often, so when it comes around, it's some feeling when you get there, and you win it in the end. And on, a, on a personal level, uh, eight points from yourself, 45 frees, and points from play, yeah, you have to be delighted with your individual performance. I know most players like to talk about the team, but personally, that must have been fantastic for you. Yeah, I'm delighted as a team. As a team, we come together as a collective. Like it's all about the team. There's no individual on it. You can't win a game without without having all the individuals coming together as a team. So I'm delighted with my performance, but all the girls are just as important as well. And what about next season for us coming now? Ah, uh, we have plenty more years to go. Eh, sure we we'll give it a go anyway. Shifra, you're gorgeous and the best of luck and enjoy the celebrations. Grameena Malga. Thanks very much, Shifra.
I'm here with our winning captain from Roscommon, Mairead Lowen. Uh, Mairead, I was just chatting to Sheaf for there. I know it's hard to sum up emotions straight after the final whistle, but that has to be something special. Oh, it's something so special. I mean, we were really the underdogs today, and Roscommon Camogie, it's, you know, it's on the uprise now, and we're finally in A, and we've never been in A before, so it's a real achievement for the county. And uh, coming into this final, as a Westmead man, I can't condone you beating Westmead a couple of times, but uh, I'll allow it. But uh, how did you feel coming into the final? You were saying there was a lot of nerves and stuff coming up against Leash. Oh, of course, we knew that Leash were going to be a really tough side, and we knew it was going to be level, as it was really up until the end where we just pulled away. But Leash, Leash are a brilliant team, and you know, just on the day, it was it was just our day today. And I asked you for the same, but what about next season for Roscommon? Is it hard to think that far ahead, or what's the plan? What's the thoughts for a next season? Jeez, uh, next season now, hopefully we'll just keep ploughing on as we are and getting better and getting more trainings in and everything and just keep getting Camogie on the uprise in Roscommon. And what's the plan in the four roads in this evening? <laughs> in four roads, I say we'll all be out tonight. We won't talk about school tomorrow anyways. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, Mairead, co gorgeous and the best of luck next season. Thanks a million. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks a million. I'm here with our winning Bonnie Story, I have to say, Sean. And Colm, lads, uh, I was saying to Mairead and to Sheaf, I can't condone you beating Westmead along the way as a Westmead man, but sum up the season in general, Sean. Well, I suppose we started off fair early in the year and we prepared hard um, for this championship because uh, we came up a division from last year. And, you know, we have, we have players from every club represented uh, on the panel, which is something that we made a big effort in, in, in doing. And um, we put the girls to work early, got them fit, did a bit of strength and condition with them, and um, they really, really took the task in hand. And we've just been going from strength to strength all year. We've been unbeaten the whole year, um, which was something we weren't expecting. But they're they're a fabulous group of players from one to thirty, and we were so happy with them, and a great, great group to coach. That's one of the things I noticed on the, the team sheet um, column is the, the huge numbers that you have. Um, is that a, a regular thing then a trainer for you guys? Yeah, that's regular, yeah. Um, we were saying that in the paper last week. We have an average of 28 every session, which is which is unreal. And if you take into account that 10 of that team there uh, that started are underage again next year. So, you know, to keep the numbers going at training, it's very, very important, you know, because at least you can be m more competitive than, you know, when you, when you do appear. So it's... Once the girls are enjoying the sessions, you know, the numbers are going to keep coming. It's a big thing. And you had fantastic performers from Andre at the front right, or Andre at the back, I should say, right through to the forward line. Schieffer was my player of the match, uh, probably for an obvious reason, but there were players all around. As a, a team performance, would it be one of the highest of the season, or what did you make of it in general as a team? Yeah, and that's been kind of a hallmark of, of our team all year. If, if somebody came to watch us play, it's usually difficult to pick out one player or a star player, and we, we don't have a standout player. Um, we've tried to uh, instill you know, the, the team ethos into that group of players, and you can see by them you know, they, they're really prepared to work for each other on the field and trying to play Camogie the right way and, and, and spray it around and basically... Um, play camogie like it should be played and they've really bought into that uh, as, a, as a team 
and even the subs that we brought on, you know, it didn't weaken us anything. And we, we've we've had long discussions all year trying to pick the best 15. And you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of players there that that could have been starting today that weren't. And I suppose as a management team, that's one of the difficult jobs, you know, is to pick 15 to start because you know we we, we could have picked a lot more than that. Was well, the final one since. Uh my uncle is a co-manager as well, joint manager. Uh, the two of you obviously get on all right then, most of the time, I'd say. Then is <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I suppose we do. I suppose since uh, the 1st of December last year, I've probably spoken to Sean every day, so uh, it's going to be a tough summer without him, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We've drank, from, he's on about picking the 15. Um, if this competition would not any longer, we'd probably be sponsored by Barry's Tea or somebody, you know, but... Uh, look at this grand we do work well together we do understand how, how the system works and it's our third year isn't it yeah, yeah. third year yeah so look at, <laughs> we'll see what happens after that you surely go for fourth I'm sure well lads uh, co gorgeous live and uh, the best of luck next season and thanks a million for a brilliant game today thank you thanks, thanks a million yeah, yeah, thanks, 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 thanks a million thanks appreciate it, it. Thank you, best thank of luck lads enjoy the season thanks <laughs> That is the end of our coverage here with the Electric Ireland All-Ireland Minor B final here between Roscommon and Leash. It is the Rossies who will take the trophy back through Athlone, through the four roads, all the way across and up and down the county as well. So for myself, Jason Keelan, and from all the media management team here in St. Brendan's Park in Burr, we say Sloan live and see you again soon.